Father God, we thank you, God, once again, Lord Jesus, as we live up to you, God, um, these kids, so God. Lord, we thank you, God, for these kids, so God. Um, Father, I ask and I pray for God that these kids, so God, will be the blessing of others, Father God. Lord, we thank you, God, for these kids, God, as they grow old, God. I ask your wisdom, Father God. I ask your obedience, Father God, that uh, they always um, obey the oh God, their parents, and especially to you, Lord Jesus. Father, let this kids of God be a blessing to the other kids, Father God, especially in the school, Lord Jesus. And we ask your uh, protection, Father God, for uh, wherever they go, God, your protection is, is still there, Father God. And Father, we thank you, God, as they proceed to uh, uh, Sunday school, Lord God, for the kids, Lord Jesus. I ask the Holy Spirit, of God, to continue to manifest, uh, God, especially, especially for the uh, uh, teacher, Lord Jesus. Uh, Lord, thank you, God, for the kids, God, as they learn your word, Lord Jesus, as they apply, oh God, um, your words, oh God, as part of their uh, growing, Lord Jesus, as they believe in you, oh God, as a Christian, Lord Jesus, and they grow old, oh God, with the wisdom of your word, Father God. Father, we thank you, Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Joel. So, we're going to continue our as well, um, every one of us here to, uh, you know, uh, even just, you know, to support our kids, to uh, establish a good, uh, you know, um, uh, Bible-friendly uh, relationship to the kids, because we don't know, 10 years, 20 years later, there will be no one standing here in front. So it's very important for us, you know, even though it's not our kid, you know, uh, we, we give them encouragement, we say to them, uh, biblical words and you know we remind them so that uh, they can have a strong and, and uh, established um, background um, uh, in the Bible. So without further ado I would like to call on Pastor, uh, our head pastor Ferdinand Rado for the message. Thank you Brother Nelson. Good morning everyone. It is true that the kids are the future of this church. We don't want to happen that, you know, when we're getting older, nobody will replace us to play our instrument and will help us to organize our church. Amen? Amen. So that's why I need to help them. And by the way, um, Sister Jude, I, uh, my wife and I, we had a discussion last uh, uh, Sunday and we we're talking about our child Sunday school and uh, we're looking for someone to help us to even to print the uh, the lessons that we need to uh, share to the kids every Sunday, and she's very uh, keen to help us. So all we have to do is just to uh, register in one website, and that is they call it uh, Sunday uh, Sunday School for the kids, and uh, just prepare that one. It will be very helpful for our charts. Whoever plays or arranges to uh, you know share the lessons to the kids, can easily do that. Amen. So, by the way, welcome back, Pastor Nelson, at the back side. So, let us uh, give a uh, welcome to Pastor Nelson. Uh, mm -hmm. It seems like he's getting uh, more healthy by the grace of God. Uh, uh, are you happy today that we are in the church? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Always remember that we are family. Amen. So, we are we're attending the church not as alone. So, we are family. So with that, I think it's very important that, uh, you know, before we start our service or our message, it's too important that, you know, we shake hands together being our uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. So maybe we can sing that song. Uh, what song, Brother Pijo? Oh, how good it is when brethren dwells together. Dwells together. So can you sing that? Uh, and then after that, we'll make a picture with David, okay? So let us sing, let us stand together and shake hands together. Oh, how good it is when brethren dwell together, dwell together, which one? I did.
David, and we'll take a picture now. Because oh. you know, after 12 o'clock, he's stuck around. Oh, really? So with okay. that, we need to give him a chance. Stand at the back of uh, David, and we'll make a picture. Okay, yay. Oh. Yeah, just stay here. Stay there. Oh. You are the father of everything. <laughs> You're in the middle. Yeah. You're in the middle. Yeah. Okay. 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 Oh, okay. No, no. Stay there, stay there. Don't push up the side. Ready? Three, two, one. Amen. It seems like a uh, last part of our service already. Uh, are you still interested to listen to the word of God today? Amen. 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 Praise God. Again, welcome back, Pastor Nelson, and we're happy to see you again in our service today. So, <clears throat> we have some highlights uh, with our uh, activity last part, Sunday. And uh, not only Friday, Sunday, but also from Saturday and also Friday. So this is our Good Friday Seven Last Words service at the Oaks Rest Home. And uh, we are very thankful with our God for this opportunity to uh, sing with them and share the word of them, the word of God to them. And as I remember, uh, Sicha, the coordinator there, when I was talking to her, she said that, uh, you know, the residents are very happy because uh, even they haven't managed to go out because of their difficulties, they have managed to hear the word of God in their facility or in their location. So we really praise God. And, uh, oh, this is our team. And uh, this is our second year giving our Good Friday seven last words message in the books. Uh, for me, this is, you know, I can say this is one of our uh, evangelism, where we have managed to share the word of God. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. So, uh, we are praying that next year, it's going to happen again. And also, the good thing is, one thing that was mentioned to me by, uh, by Sincha, that every Tuesday, uh, there are different churches that are, that are coming there every Sunday at around 11 in the morning. And she said that on the fifth Tuesday, nobody's using it. If you want, we can try to check if you can fit in on that every uh, fifth Tuesday of the month to share the word of God with the residents of this um, rest home, the hope. So are you excited to go there? Amen. 11 in the morning, you want to absent? <laughs> Actually, that one is we can say every Tuesday, uh, we can say big Tuesday of the month. Maybe it will only happen maybe after three or four months. So if it's very far, maybe we can allocate time to get a lead on that specific day. And uh, that's good to share the word of God with the other people. And also a living spring retreat. Uh, uh, we are very thankful with uh, you know our God for the opportunity to. Uh, uh, give this, uh, you know, baptism with uh, Brother Joel. Brother Joel is the one who's attending in our church. And uh, after that, well, they enjoyed uh, swimming together and playing basketball together in the water. Who enjoyed in the water as you are playing? Amen. It's good. So that's our life. Uh, we need to enjoy our life being a Christian, not, you know, always uh, looking directly by yourself and not enjoying the the place outside or the outdoor activities. And also one thing which is very important in our living uh, uh, spring retreat is all about the prayer of renouncement. Uh, uh, when you say uh, a renouncement, it talks about an act spoken or written, declared that something is surrendered or disowned. And with that, if you still remember, uh, we forgive someone 
Amen. Amen. And aside from forgive, uh, forgiving someone, and the other one also, we pull down of strongholds of whatever strongholds that we have. Meaning strongholds is something which is not uh, good in the eyes of God, but we are holding it. So by doing these two, we have written something, we pray for it, and then at the end, what we have done? We burn it. So when we burn it, we forget everything. Whatever happens, whoever person who hurted us. And I, I can see, you know, some of our brethren, they're crying, and uh, even we heard some share about, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, there's some heart that was happened to him, but at the end, because of this uh, retreat, uh, he has managed to release those uh, unforgiven feelings. And I do believe that whoever has that feeling, now he can sleep well. Amen. She can sleep well. Amen? You have managed to sleep well on that night? Amen. 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 I remember, I think 4 o'clock in the afternoon, that was Sunday, my wife and I were already sleeping. 4 o'clock. And then we woke up around 9 p.m. Then we slept on the plane. Hmm. Okay, so the next part. Oh, this is our picture. Don, he's very, uh, you know, feeling relaxed, <laughs> lying in the table. Mm. Amen. So, brethren, we are always remember we are families. We are not uh, an individual person only, but we are family. A family of Christian believers. Amen. 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 Praise God. Okay, so we're going now to uh, our topic for today, and uh, it talks about Jesus' appearances after resurrection. If you still remember that last week, uh, we had discussed about the Easter Sunday where Jesus was raised from the dead after three days, and we've learned a lot. Amen? Always keep this in mind, my brethren, that reading or uh, watching something is a head knowledge. But to go deeper with the Word of God and to interpret what's going on during that time, and you found out what is the right way to interpret it, that's a wisdom from God. Amen? Now, in James chapter 1, verse 5, it's very clear what it says there that, you know, if you lack wisdom, if you lack wisdom, you should ask God. So when God has given us the wisdom, He's helping us to go deeper in the Word of God and try to find out what's going on on that particular scriptures. So are you ready? Amen. Amen. Jesus' appearances after resurrection. Have you remember those people where they were in the... Uh, place where Jesus was in the tomb and they came there. You remember those people? Now we will see them one by one. First one is Mary Magdalene sees the risen Lord. Second one is the woman worship the risen Lord. The third one is Jesus appears to two disciples and then Jesus appears to his disciples without Thomas and another one is with Thomas and other disciples. Also, Jesus appears and restores Simon Peter. Jesus appears to 500 brethren. And Jesus appears to remove unbelief and hardness of heart of the disciples. And the last one is Jesus tell the Great Commission. So are you ready to know this one by one about the appearances of Jesus Christ? Amen. 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 Before we proceed, it's very important that we need to pray and let us ask God to guide us with His Holy Spirit so that as we study this word, it will go into our mind and will help us to understand and to apply it in our life, being a follower of Christ. Amen. Let us pray for a short prayer. Our Heavenly Father, O oh God, thank you for this wonderful day that you have given to us, that we gather together into your holy name to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, O oh Lord God, that today we will hear your word and to see what is just directly in the passage 
to enable us to understand it, to enable us to apply it, whatever revelations that can apply in our life today. We ask for your holy presence in this place. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So in 45 minutes, I want to stop the, this message. We don't want to make it so long. So with that, uh, we're looking for First Brother Elsa. Uh, keep uh, making sure that in less than, if I already reached 35 minutes, just give me a warning that 10 minutes left. And then at least I know that uh, I need to summarize my message. We don't want to keep it so long to so, uh, making sure that we are doing our service on time. Are you happy with that? Yes. So can I get your 45 minutes maximum? You got 25 already, Pastor. 25? <laughs> That's introduction. Yeah. It is 11.20. We should be wrapping up by 11.45. 11.45. Okay. Anyhow, uh, give me 40 minutes, okay? 40 minutes. Oh, I'm asking 5 minutes uh, discount. Okay. Uh, you know, brethren, every Sunday for me, attending a church service, there are two things that I want to do. Number one is to worship our God through our praise and worship. You know, when I'm singing to the Lord, I'm singing by heart. I'm singing with all the text that I'm reading. I'm trying to feel it, what's happening on that song. When you feel that, for sure, when you feel it, you will feel the presence of God. That you are touched by the Holy Spirit. That this song is for God. And this, is, this song is for me. As we worship our Lord God. And second thing is to hear the word of God. So that's why every time that you are in the church. Two things. Make it ready for the praise and worship. And ready to the message. Okay. And Jesus appearances after resurrection. Mary Magdalene sees the risen Lord. Here it says that, but Mary, in uh, John 20, verse 11 onward, but Mary stood outside by the tomb, weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white city, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had laid. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord. And I do not know where they have laid him. Can you imagine this passage? You can see that one which is following Jesus Christ was placing him, herself close to the tomb and looking for Jesus. And she was crying so much because she could not be able to find her Lord, which is Jesus Christ, was no longer there. And in verse 14, now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. And didn't know that it was Jesus. In verse 15, Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She supposing him to be the gardener said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Can you imagine that this woman, Mary Magdalene, she's trying to do her best to find where is her Lord? Where it was buried? What's going on? She don't know what happened during that time. So that's why she thought that the one that she's asked that she's asking is a gardener and asking, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. But Jesus said to her, said, Mary. She turned and said to him, immediately. Mary Magdalene, she identified that she is, he is Jesus Christ. And she said, Rabbi, which is to say teacher. And in verse 17, Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not ascend, yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father and to my God and to your God. So this verse 17, it talks about, you know, clearly that the Father of Jesus Christ is also our Father. The God of Jesus Christ is also our God. Confirming that we are in the same faith in God. And in verse 18, it says here, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. 
So from this passage, we can easily find out that Mary Magdalene, she was the one who sees Jesus Christ alive on that resurrection, and then she went to the disciples to tell that. Now there's a question here. Why Jesus appeared first with Mary Magdalene? What do you think? Why Jesus appeared first with Mary Magdalene? Why not with his disciples? Why not with his mother? This is a question that sometimes by reading the word of God, we can get something why. When we look back in the uh, In verse 11 here, when we go back in this verse, it says, But Mary stood outside by the tomb, weeping, and she, she wept. She stood down and looked into the tomb. During this time, as you can see, that there's no disciples during that time, only Mary Magdalene was there. Can you imagine if we are on that situation or on that time and we really love Jesus Christ, maybe we are the one who was sitting in the tomb. Amen? And if that will happen and we're crying so much because our God is not there, for sure that Jesus can also talk to you saying, why are you with me? So what it tells us about these scriptures, meaning when we go closer to God, God can easily talk to us. Amen? I'm sure that whoever is close at that time, if they are there, either the disciples or the mother of Jesus, Jesus can appear with them and see the heart of this woman who was crying so much, looking for his Savior. Jesus' appearance after resurrection is also the women worship the risen Lord. And in Matthew 28, verse 9 to 10, before that, I want you to, I will read it to you, the passage here in verse 1 onward. Now, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to, to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. And in verse 8, it says, So they went out quickly and from the tomb, with fear and great joy, and ran to bring his disciple word. As they are on the way, now it's going to verse 9, it says there that, And as they went to tell his disciples, Behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him by faith and worshipped him. So along the way, Jesus showed himself to these women and saying, Rejoice! And what happened? These women held by his feet and worship him. And the last verse in verse 10, then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid, go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee and there they will see me. This is the second appearances of Jesus Christ with the women. First one is with Mary Magdalene and the second one is this two group of women, including Mary Magdalene also. Jesus' appearances also, it was happened with the two disciples. In Mark 16, verse 12, it says here, After that, he appeared in another form to two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it to the rest, but they did not believe on it. And there are some more details here on the next uh, Next one, in 17, I'll read it to you. They call it the road to Emmaus, where Jesus was appeared 
with the disciples also during that time. In verse 13, Luke chapter 24, verse 13, it says, Now behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. And he said to them, What kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Can you imagine that Jesus Christ suddenly appeared close to them and walking and asked this question? But during that time, Jesus was, you know, not identified with the two uh, disciples. And in verse 18, it says here, then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which had happened there in these days? And in verse 19 it says, And he said to them, What things? So it seems like, you know, Jesus wants to get more information with these two uh, disciples. And in verse 20 it says here that, So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. Verse 20, it says here that, And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, beside all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the top early astonished us, when they did not find his body, they came saying that they had, also, they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were visiting us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said. But him, they did not see Jesus in the tomb. And in verse 25, it says here, Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken, Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. And in verse 27, it says there that, And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So, Jesus Christ has given more information with these two disciples when, the, when, we're, when they're talking along the Emmaus or going uh, to Emmaus, and that is the third appearance of Jesus Christ. And the next one here is Jesus appears to his disciples. It's a very nice picture. I hope this is the right close during that time, but it's not for sure. It will be much older design during that time. Here, in verse 36, it says here, now, as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace to you. In verse 7, But they were terrified and frightened, and supposed they had seen a spirit. And in verse 38, And he said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts arise in your heart? Can you imagine Jesus Christ they know that he was already passed away, and now he was talking to the disciples saying, Peace to you. If that will happen today, even before, if you know that somebody already died and he stood in front of you and saying, Peace to you, peace to you, for sure that you will be having some doubt why this guy was already dead and now standing in front of me and telling something. So that's why they are very, what? Feeling they are in trouble and there are doubts in their heart during that time. And in verse 39, Behold, my hands and my feet, that is my, I myself, handle me and see for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. It is true, a spirit there is no flesh and bones. In the Philippines, there are some people that are saying that they have seen a spirit or a bad spirit or a spirit of a person. 
I'm sure that, you know, maybe some of you, you also seen some spirit before. In verse 40, it says here, when he had said this, he showed them his hand. Jesus has shown his hand and his feet. This is me. This is me. But while they still did not believe for joy and marveled, he said to them, have you have any food here? So Jesus is asking for the food. Because for sure, if it is a true spirit, that spirit cannot eat. That spirit cannot drink. It's true. So what happened here? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and ate it in their presence. So that's an assurance that I'm alive. I'm Jesus Christ, and as I told you before I die, that I will be resurrected after three days. And now I'm here, I'm eating in front of you. You must believe. Even they have some doubt initially. Next one is Jesus appears to Thomas and other disciples. You know, Thomas is the doubting Thomas. The other people are saying this. What is doubting? Because he's doubting that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. Now in this passage, we will read it and from here you will understand what it says. And in John 20, verse 24 to 29. Now Thomas called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless, this is Thomas, Thomas what he said, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, okay? He said with the other disciples, Thomas was talking, he wants to believe that Jesus Christ was raised once he has seen the nail or the, the hole in the hand of Jesus Christ. So that's why it says here in verse uh, 24, so he said to them, unless I see his hands, the print of the nails, and put my fingers into the print of the nails, and put my hands into his side. Remember that Jesus Christ was hit in this side. Just to double check if he's still alive. What he said, if I can't do that, I will not believe. That what Thomas was saying. So Thomas is more on to see is to believe. Okay. But let's see what's going on. So when we go to the next slides here, in 26, it says here, And after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them now during that time. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and he stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Jesus Christ is always saying, Peace to you. Whatever he met the disciples at that time. Then he said to Thomas directly, he said, Reach your finger here and look at my hands. Reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Jesus Christ was talking to this time with Thomas because Thomas was having a doubt. And on the next verse it says, And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. What we can see in this passage is that Thomas, he just only believed with God. When he touched, he has seen the nail hole and also the pierce in the chest. And in the last verse, actually, this is a reminder for each and every one of us. It says here, Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Amen? Nowadays, we can easily say that we are belongs to this second part. We haven't seen Jesus Christ, but we believe. Amen? We believe. So that's why we are blessed are those who have been, who haven't not seen and yet believe. Jesus appears in the Sea of Tiberias or the Sea of Galilee. So in this part, it's a very nice situation that you will see in this passage. And in this passage will help us to understand why Jesus needs to appear in the Sea of Tiberias. What he wants to point out with the disciples. In verse 5, it says here, 
I'll go to verse 1 first. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And in his way, he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We are going with you also. So they went out and immediately got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. Can you imagine what's going here for a fishing? Hmm. I remember we went to, what is, what's that place? Zero. <laughs> We're zero. We haven't got anything. Okay? Only for a couple of hours. But can you imagine the whole night they're going for a fishing, these disciples, they did not get anything. So, but when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore. So Jesus was stood up in the seashore and then the disciples are still there in the boat trying to get something. Then, what Jesus says, Children, have you any food? What they answered? They answered him, No. And in verse 6, And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. Can you imagine? They are already in the boat trying to pass up from the beginning of the night until the morning and they are not getting anything. But Jesus commanded them saying, Cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. Let's see what will happen on the next slide. In verse 7, it says here that, Therefore, that disciple, disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it, and plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from land, but about 200 cubits, dragging the net with fish. Then as soon as they had come to, lay, to, to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid on it, and bread. And in verse 10 it says, Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Before Jesus was telling this, in verse 9, there was already a fire coals there, and there is already a fish laid on it. So Jesus was already seeing that there is a you know, fish that are already cooked. And in verse 11, it says here, Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land full of large fish. And 100, how many that he got? 153 fishes that they caught. And although there were so many, the net was not broken. And in verse 12, Jesus said to them, Come and eat breakfast. So can you imagine that the whole nature trying to get something that you haven't got anything? But because of his command, because of his presence, they got a fish and they came to the seashore and now the food is ready to eat. In verse 14 it says here that, you know, this is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Follow me. Peter is restored by the Lord Jesus. John 21, 15 to 19. Jesus restores Peter. After they had eaten their breakfast with Jesus Christ, the question here is, it continues, and it talks about restoring Peter. Why Jesus wants to restore Peter, or Simon Peter? What do you think? Now you will find out. Matthew 16, verse 22, Jesus predicts his death. It says here that, you know, then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. During the time when Jesus was saying that, you know, I'll be parting from you or going away from you. And he said that from the time when Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, 
Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. Peter was trying to protect Jesus Christ, but Jesus Christ. But what Jesus Christ said here is that, but he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of man. And the second part is Jesus predicts Peter's denial during that time. In 29, Mark 14, verse 29, Peter declared, Even if all fall away, what he said, I will not, or he will not. What does it mean? During that time, Jesus was saying that, you know, if I will be denied, Jesus Christ will go into uh, suffering. Peter declared, even if I if all fall away, I will not. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you yourself with his own name three times. But Peter insisted emphatically, and he said, even I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others said the same. Can you imagine how uh, Peter wants to make sure that he will not deny Jesus Christ on, based on this passage. But what will happen next? Peter denies Jesus and it was happened in Luke 22 verse 56 to 62. It says here, Then a servant girl seeing him as he sat in the light and looking closely at him said, This man also was with him. But he denied it saying, Woman, I do not know him. So that's the first one that was said by Peter. Second one, and a little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter said again, Man, I am not. This is the second denial of Jesus Christ. And that, well, with uh, Peter, with Jesus Christ. And the third one is, And after an interval of about an hour, is still another insisted saying, Certainly this man also was taking with him, for he is, he, he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. So from this passage, we can easily say that Peter denied Jesus Christ three times already. And on the last verse, it says here, And immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered that saying of the Lord. How he had said to him that before the rooster crowed, Today, you will deny me three times. And when he went out and wept bitterly. So from this part, we can easily say that Peter denies Jesus Christ for three times. Initially, he's trying to defend Jesus Christ that, No, whatever happens to you, I will stand beside you. Amen? That's what we heard initially. But at the end, Peter denies Jesus Christ when they are already in a big trouble during that time. Or when Jesus Christ was already suffering. Here in verse 15, Jesus restores Peter. So that's why when he was talking to Peter, so when they had eaten breakfast, eating fish and bread, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than this? What does it mean more than this? When you say more than this is, Jesus was referring to the first few verses before this verse 15. What are those few verses? Jesus was talking about, you know, the feast that they call. Here, just to go back a little bit in John 21. In verse 5, then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? They answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast. And now they were not able to draw it because of the multitude multitude of fish. Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw a far coast there and fish laid on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you have just caught. And in the last part it says, come and eat breakfast. Brethren, this passage before the verse 15, we can easily find out that the disciples received a blessing already from Jesus Christ. They haven't got anything but because of Jesus Christ, they got a lot of fish and they prepared the foods for this. So, when Jesus was talking to, to Peter, 
Jesus said to Simon Peter, said, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than this? He's talking about these blessings that he received. All those benefits that he received because of Jesus Christ. He asked Peter, and Peter said, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him. And then Jesus said, Feed my lambs. That's what Jesus said. That's the first question of Jesus Christ. Second one, he asked again in verse 16. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, Tend my sheep or take care of my sheep. That's the response of Jesus Christ. And the third one, he said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Can you imagine, brethren, if somebody will ask you for three times, if you love me, if you love me, if you love me, and then you will answer the same thing, why it requires to ask for several times? What do you think? Maybe the first two answers of Simon Peter, it is not 100% that, you know, he wants to follow God during that time. So that's why in the third one, he was feeling so grieved already that he said, Lord, you know all things. So he entrusted everything to Jesus Christ. You know everything to me. Then, you know that I love you. And then at the end, what Jesus said? Feed my sheep. So at the end of this story about restoration of Peter, in verse 18 it says there that, Most assuredly I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, Follow me. So, brethren, from here we can easily see the, um, the question of Jesus Christ and what happened at the end. First thing, Jesus said, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than this? Feed my lungs. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Then, or take care of my sheep. The third one, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Feed my sheep. And the last one, Jesus answered, follow me, which is very important. That's why when we're looking here, how, Jesus, how Peter denies Jesus Christ, he denied three times. But Jesus Christ was also asking him three times why in this part that he needs to feed the lambs, take care of the sheep, and feed again the sheep. Jesus appears to 500 brethren. So we are now in the closing part of this. It says here, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3, For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that He was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve, after that He was seen by over five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remained to the present, but some have fallen asleep. After that He was seen by James, then by all the apostles, then last of all, He was seen by me also by one born out of due time. This was the message of um, a Paul, the Apostle Paul. From this side, we can see that Jesus Christ was seen by so many people. Can you imagine, brethren, how if Jesus was only appeared in one person, How if Jesus was only appeared like with Mary Magdalene and nothing else? Do you think that the people can easy, easily believe? I remember back in the Philippines, I was, uh, it was early in the morning, around 3 in the morning. I was walking in, I was walking in the street where there's no light at all. I've seen one one boy, he was walking maybe around six or seven years old. 
It's very dark and it's a rough road. And in the middle of the, the road, I've seen a, a boy, six or seven years old, he was walking towards me. Three in the morning, there's no light, only, uh, you know, the moon is there. And when I've seen that guy, I was talking to, he was going directly to me and I was talking, where are you going? And then the boy just slowly passing directly to me to the other side. I was feeling a little bit with that boy. And uh, what I've done, I just took the boy. When I looked at the boy, the boy was stuck and saying, when I, said, when I have seen that one, I did not look back again and then I just continued to, to walk. <laughs> not to run, but I'm hitting my pace. Is that true? Three in the morning. Maybe someone that believed. So if Jesus Christ was only appeared in one person, maybe some people would not believe. But Jesus Christ was appeared with a 500, and because of that, they know that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. Jesus' appearance in Mark, can you imagine here, you will see directly where Jesus is going. This is Jerusalem, this is Emmaus, and uh, this is uh, Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene, and so on. And this is the, Jesus appears to his disciples as the priest, as you can see in the map. And even in the timeline here, Jesus' appearances in timeline. That was started in Mary Magdalene, the other Mary, Salome, Joanna, and at least one other woman. Simon, Peter, Cleopas, the 11 disciples, the 11, including Thomas as John, 7 disciples, and so on. So from here, we can easily say that Jesus was appeared to a different one. Two minutes more, just give me two minutes, and then I'll finalize this. Jesus' appearance after resurrection, it was happened not only with Mary. Just to prove that Jesus was raised from the dead, and not only known by one person, but with the multiple disciples, persons, during that time. And before Jesus telling the Great Commission, just keep this in mind, brethren. When, before Jesus was given the Great Commission, to the disciples, he just told this verse. The eleven disciples went away to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When Jesus saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. This is what was happened before the Great Commission. Some of the brethren was it still doubted, and some of them they are unbelief and hardness of heart. And so, because of this. He said in uh, John 20, verse 21, So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also send to you. And when he had said this, he brought on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. So what happened? Jesus was removed the doubt and the, you know, the unbelief heart of the disciples and he prayed for the disciples to receive the Holy Spirit. And the last part, what he said, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. It's a very good reminder for each and every one of us that we need to forgive and forget it. The moment that we did not forgive anyone, it will retain to us. Amen? We don't want any retainment. Amen? Amen. We don't want so now, do you want to receive the Holy Spirit? Amen. Amen. Before we can go outside, we need to receive the Holy Spirit. That if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. And this is the great commission before that. After they receive the Holy Spirit, now you will see here in verse 45, and he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. When they receive the Holy Spirit. So that's why it's very important that we cannot live without the Holy Spirit in our life. Amen? We cannot say we know everything, whatever situation is there, but we need the Holy Spirit to lead us. And at the end, it says here that before Jesus telling the Great Commission, He has seen the doubt of disciples, He rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart, He has given the Holy Spirit, He told them to forgive any sins, he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. And Jesus is telling us the Great Commission. What's the Great Commission? Great Commission? It says here, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. 
He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on sick and they will cover. Amen? That's the truth. When God is working in our life, for sure that we can heal someone. When God is working in our heart, for sure that we can lead people to Christ. If the Spirit of God is not in our heart, we cannot lead people to Christ. That's 100 percent sure. You cannot lead people to Christ if by yourself you don't have the Spirit of God. And lastly, brethren, Christ ascends to God's right hand. It says in Mark chapter 16, verse 19 to 20. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Brethren, we are in this part. We are part of this, you know, working with the Lord's vineyard. Do you want to work with the Lord's vineyard? Amen. Amen. We want. And with that, do you want to receive the Holy Spirit? Amen. Let us all stand and let's pray as we close. Let us close our eyes and bow our hands. Our Heavenly Father of God, thank you for the message that you have given to us today about how you appear in different uh, disciples, peoples during your time to enable us to understand well that those revelations confirming that you raised from the dead, confirming that you blessed the disciples before you left in this world. Lord, as we come into your holy presence, that is very clear that to enable us to serve you well, to help you with the ministry that you are giving to us, we need to accept the Holy Spirit. Father of God, we pray today that if there's anyone in our midst who wants to receive the Holy Spirit, let them on them, O Lord God. We pray for them, O God, that they will receive the Holy Spirit, and once they receive it, time will come that, you know, serving Him, serving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, would be much easier to do without any harden in our heart, O God. Father, we pray, O God, for my brethren today, Continue to bring them in this place to enable them to grow into your word so that one day all of us will, will work together to glorify you in spirit and in truth. That the joy in our heart is not a joy for this world only, but a joy which is coming from you to present ourselves to you with openness, without blameless. We are blameless, Lord of God, in front of you. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for gracing us with your word through Pastor Ferdy. Okay, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, before we move on to the next part, I would like to um, read the, the scripture from Matthew um, 6, verses 1 to 4, for our tithes and offering scripture. from New King James Version. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise you have no rewards from Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. What your charitable deed may be in secret, and your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. Okay, and for the tithes, uh, as we giving our tithes in offering, um, a video will be played for us to, uh, to watch. And after that, I would like to ask uh, 
Brother Pijo to uh, uh, pray for the uh, tithes and offerings. I know, brethren, as we're waiting for uh, the, uh, the the video, uh, just to inform everyone that after the service, uh, Sister Lourdes and Sister Venus will uh, distribute the uh, the generosity of our members through the you know love operate for the last year. So we're giving the, the call it a uh, the, your donations to the church. They will give you an envelope with the uh, amount that you're giving for the whole year, and with that amount, you can use it to. Uh, uh, to, to get a tax refunds and uh, whatever you give there, they will return to you 33.33%. So when you apply it uh, online or even submit it by post. Uh, so it's a very nice reminder for us to uh, uh, to give back that what he uh, deserved. And uh, uh, tithing actually is a part of uh, a ministry. Um, so uh, if, if you're tithing, you're you're, um, you're in that ministry as well to, to glorify uh, the Lord. So I would like to ask uh, Brother Pijo. Okay, uh, let us sing. Break the throne of blessings flow. Raise him up, raise your spirit low. Raise him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your um, for today of 
one particular for the blessing of God that you have given to us. Particular that um um uh, that every word of God that come from your word from come from your mouth is your blessing of God. Thank you, Father, for um, the word of God that you have given to us. And Lord, um, as you uh, use this offering, O God, is the support of His regular word, O God. And Lord, uh, bless the people who are giving this, O God, the time, O God. Lord, bless the people who are um, serving you, O God. Lord, we love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for everything, O God. Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Um, announcement. So I believe we don't have any first time visitors and I would like to read this one again. Uh, New Zealand Christian Fellowship is a non-denominational and non-sectarian body of Christian believers. We firmly believe in full gospel and salt the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So happy birthday brother uh, uh, Brian. Happy uh, birthday uh, Happy, happy birthday. And uh, uh, for the Good Friday service which was this, uh, discussed by Pastor earlier. And Living Spring Retreat, and uh, yeah, I would like to commend everyone for the successful uh, retreat. And for the class 201 after the uh, lunch from 1 to 2 p.m. So before the um, prayer meeting, it will, will be held at uh, Riverton Library every Friday, 8 p.m. And now we are back to three life group, Pastor Nelson, Pastor Joel, and Pastor Ferdy. And uh, the part of my message, the ministry of disciples of Jesus Christ. And our lunch day was prepared and sponsored by Sister Aloha. So God bless and see you next week. Before we uh, pass to Pastor Joel for the uh, for the uh, final benediction, I would like to remind uh, everyone um, for for the time uh, of, of our service. So um, our service will start at ten thirty, and then it will run for an hour and a half. So it's a good reminder for us to be mindful. To uh, come, uh, to try not to come late, so that we can start at 10:30. Even myself, I get late at that time. So we'll start 10:30, and uh, hopefully we'll finish it uh, before uh, or 12, so that we'll be around one hour and 30 minutes uh, for the whole service. And I'd like to encourage for the messengers as well to, uh, to to limit their time for messaging for 40 minutes. Um, um, 11, 10:30 will be the praise and worship. And then at 11, 11 a.m., that will be the start of the, um, uh, the message, and it will end at 11.40. And then we'll, we'll do the rest of the offertory and things like that until 12. Sorry? Oh, sorry. Uh, I, uh, I, I would just like to um, uh, include Dawn with a picture uh, for preparing the lunch. So I would like to give Pastor Joel for the benediction. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you, God, for this uh, morning, God, as we uh, worship your holy name, as we hear your word, God. We thank you, God, for the, for the word that we heard to you, God, as a reminder, of God, uh, for what uh, you did in, the, in this world, Father God. Father, we thank you, God, for your uh, wonderful deeds, God. And Father, we thank you, God, for this uh, uh, morning, God. Thank you for everyone who are here who are attending the service, Lord God, thank you, God, that you will continue to bless them, God, uh, not only um, in, in uh, physical, God, but also in spiritually blessing, to God. Father, we thank you, Jesus, and we thank you, God, for the foods uh, we partake to God. Thank you, God, for the person who prepared the food to God. Uh, uh, let your blessing to God pour out upon their house, Father God, and also bless their work to God. Uh, your protection will be always with them, God. And by the way, thank you, God, for the, uh, our brother uh, Brian, Lord God, as uh, he celebrated uh, his birthday, Lord. Thank you, God, for his life, God, uh, that you will always continue to uh, uh, bless him, God. Thank you, God, for the year that you have given to him, God. Thank you, God, and I pray, Lord Jesus, that uh, more years to come to the life of uh, brother Brian, God. And thank you for the blessing, especially to uh, his family, God. Father, we thank you, God, for this morning, God, and we give you back all the glory, God, um, and all our thanksgiving, God, and Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's give God uh, uh, a round of black offering. And see you next week. Benediction.
So before we end our uh, our service today, I'll just um, uh, give you a, a blessing with the word of God. And now may the peace from our Father in heaven and the guidance of the Holy Spirit and and the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to be upon us now and forever. Everybody see. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you.